Anecdote of Canna by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Huge are the Cana in the dreams of X, the mighty thought, the mighty man. They fill the terrace of his capital. His thought sleeps not. Yet thought that wakes in sleep may never meet another thought or thing. Now daybreak comes. X promenades the dewy stones, observes the canna with a clinging eye, observes and then continues to observe. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Anecdote of Men by the Thousand by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. The soul, he said, is composed of the external world. There are men of the East, he said, who are the East. There are men of province who are that province. There are men of a valley who are that valley. There are men whose words are as natural sounds of their places as the cackle of toucans in the place of toucans. The mandolin is the instrument of a place. Are there mandolins of western mountains? Are there mandolins of northern moonlight? The dress of a woman of Lhasa in its place is an invisible element of that place made visible. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Anecdote of the Jar by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. July 11th, 2006, in Long Branch, New Jersey, PaintedRiceCakes.org I placed a jar in Tennessee, and round it was upon a hill. It made the slovenly wilderness surround that hill. The wilderness rose up to it, and sprawled around, no longer wild. The jar was round upon the ground, and tall, and of a port in air. It took dominion everywhere. The jar was gray and bare. It did not give a bird or bush like nothing else in Tennessee. End of poem. This poem is in the public domain. Another Weeping Woman by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Pour the unhappiness out from your too bitter heart, which, grieving, will not sweeten. Poison grows in this dark. It is in the water of tears its black blooms rise. The magnificent cause of being the imagination, the one reality in this imagined world. The magnificent cause of being, the imagination, the one reality in this imagined world. Leaves you with him for whom no fantasy moves, and you are pierced by a death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Apostrophe to Vincentine Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake I figure you as nude between monotonous earth and dark blue sky. It made you seem so small and lean and nameless, heavenly Vincentine. 2. I saw you then, as warm as flesh, brunette, but yet not too brunette, 
as warm, as clean. Your dress was green, was whitened green, green Vincentine. 3. Then you came walking in a group of human others, voluble. Yes, you came walking, Vincentine. Yes, you came talking. 4. And what I felt you felt came then. Monotonous earth I saw became illimitable spheres of you. And that white animal, so lean, turned Vincentine, turned heavenly Vincentine. And that white animal, so lean, turned heavenly, heavenly Vincentine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Autumn by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Long lines of coral light and evening star one shade that leads the night on from afar. And I keep sorrowing this sunless zone, Waiting and resting here in calm above. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Banal Sojourn by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Two wooden tubs of blue hydrangeas stand at the foot of the stone steps. The sky is a blue gum streaked with rose. The trees are black. The grackles crack their throats of bone in the smooth air. Moisture and heat have swollen the garden into a slum of bloom. Pardi, summer is like a fat beast, sleepy in mildew. Our old bane, green and bloated, serene, who cries, That bliss of stars, that princox of evening heaven. Reminding of season, when radiance came running down, slim through the bareness. And so it is, one damns the green shade at the bottom of the land. Who can care at the wigs despoiling the Satan ear? And who does not seek the sky unfuzzed, soaring to the princox? One has a malady. Here, a malady. One feels a malady. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bantams in Pine Woods by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Chieftain Ifacan of Azcan in Kaftan, of Tan with Henna Hackles, halt, damned universal cock, as if the sun was blackamoor to bear your blazing trail. Fat, fat, fat. Fat, I am the personal. Your world is you. I am my world. You ten-foot poet among itchlings, fat, be gone. An inchling bristles in these pines, bristles and points their Appalachian tangs, and fears not portly as can, nor his who's. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Bird with the Coppery Keen Claws by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Above the forest of the parakeets, 
a parakeet of parakeets prevails, a pip of life amid a mort of tails. The rudiments of tropics are around, aloe of ivory, pear of rusty rind. His lids are white, because his eyes are blind. He is not paradise of parakeets of his gold ether, golden alguazil, except because he broods there and is still. Panache upon panache, his tails deploy upward and outward in green-vented forms, his tip a drop of water full of storms. But though the turbulent tinges undulate as his pure intellect applies its laws, he moves not on his coppery, keen claws. He munches a dry shell while he exerts his will, yet never ceases, perfect cock, to flare in the sun pallor of his rock. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bowl by Wallace Stevens, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. For what emperor was this bowl of earth designed? Here are more things than on any bowl of the sungs, even the rarest, vines that take the various obscurities of the moon, approaching rain, and leaves that would be loose upon the wind, pears on pointed trees, the dresses of women, oxen. I never tire to think of this. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Carnet de Voyage by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake 1. An odor from a star comes to my fancy, slight, tenderly spiced and gay, as if a seraph's hand unloosed the fragrant silks of some sultana, bright in her soft sky. And pure it is, and excellent, as if a seraph's blue fell, as a shadow falls, and his warm body shed sweet exhalations, void of our despised decay. 2. One More Sunset The green goes from the corn, the blue from all the lakes, and the shadows of the mountains mingle in the sky. Far off the still bamboo grows green, the desert pool turns gaudy turquoise for the chanting caravan. The changing green and blue flow round the changing earth, and all the rest is empty wandering and sleep. 3. Here the grass grows, and the wind blows, and in the steam small fishes gleam blood-red in hue of shadowy blue, and amber sheen, and waterine, and yellow flash, and diamond ash, and the grass grows, and the wind blows. 4. She that winked her sandal fan long ago in gray Japan, she that heard the bell intone rendezvous by rolling roan, how wide the spectacle of sleep, hands folded, Eyes too still to weep. 5. I am weary of the plum and of the cherry, And that buff moon in evening's aquarelle. I have no heart within to make me merry. I nod above the books of heaven or hell. All things are old. The newborn swallows fare through the spring twilight On dead September's wing. The dust of Babylon is in the air, and settles on my lips the while I sing. 6. Man from the waste devolved the Cytherean glade, 
imposed on battering seas his keel's dividing blade, and sailed there unafraid. The isle revealed his worth. It was a place to sing in, and honor noble life, for white doves to wing in, and roses to spring in. 7. Chinese Rocket There a rocket in the wane brings primeval night again. All the startled heavens flare from the shepherd to the bear. When the old-time dark returns, lo, the steadfast lady burns her curious lantern to disclose how calmly the white river flows. 8. An Old Guitar It was a simple thing for her to sit and sing, Hey, Nani, no! This year and that befell, Time saw and time can tell, With a hey and a ho. Under the peach tree, Play such mockery away, Hey, Nani, no! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cortage for Rosenblum Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Now, the rye Rosenblum is dead, And his finical carriers tread On a hundred legs, the tread of the dead. Rosenblum is dead. They carry the weazened one of the color of horn To this sullen hill, Treading a tread in unison for the dead. Rosenblum is dead. The tread of the carriers does not halt on the hill, but turns up the sky. They are bearing his body into the sky. It is the infants of misanthropes and the infants of nothingness that tread the wooden ascents of the ascending of the dead. It is turbans they wear, and boots of fur as they tread the boards in a region of frost, viewing the frost. To a chur of gongs and a chitter of cries and the heavy thrum of the endless tread that they tread, to the jabber of doom and a jumble of words of the intense poem of the strictest prose of Rosenblum. And they bury him there, body and soul, in a place in the sky, the lamentable tread. Rosenblum is dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cuban Doctor by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake. I went to Egypt to escape the Indian, but the Indian struck out of his cloud and from his sky. This was no worm bred in the moon, wriggling far down the phantom air, and on a comfortable sofa dreamed. The Indian struck and disappeared. I knew my enemy was near, I, drowsing in the summer's sleepiest horn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Curtains in the House of the Metaphysician by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake It comes about that the drifting of these curtains is full of long motions, as the ponderous deflations of distance, or as clouds inseparable from their afternoons, or the changing of light, the dropping of the silence, wide sleep and solitude of night, in which all motion is beyond us, as the firmament, uprising and downfalling bears the last largeness, bold to see.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Depression Before Spring by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. The cock crows, but no queen rises. The hair of my blonde is dazzling, as the spittle of cows threading the wind. Ho, ho! But Kikiriki brings no roku, no rokuku. But no queen comes in slipper green. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Disillusionment of Ten O'Clock by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake of Long Branch, New Jersey. The houses are haunted by white nightgowns. None are green, or purple with green rings, or green with yellow rings, or yellow with blue rings. None of them are strange, with socks of lace and beaded censures. People are not going to dream of baboons and periwinkles. Only, here and there, an old sailor, drunk and asleep in his boots, catches tigers in red weather. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Domination of Black by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. At night, by the fires, the colors of the bushes and of the fallen leaves, repeating themselves, turned in the room, like the leaves themselves turning in the wind. Yes, but the color of the heavy hemlocks came striding, and I remember the cry of the peacock. The colors of their tails were like the leaves themselves turning in the wind, in the twilight wind. They swept over the room just as they flew from the boughs of the hemlocks down to the ground. I heard them cry, the peacocks. Was it a cry against the twilight or against the leaves themselves turning in the wind, turning as the flames turned in the fire, turning as the tails of the peacocks turned in the loud fire? Loud as the hemlocks, full of the cry of the peacocks? Or was it a cry against the hemlocks? Out of the window I saw how the planets gathered like the leaves themselves, turning in the wind. I saw how the night came, came striding like the color of the heavy hemlocks. I felt afraid, and I remembered the cry of the peacocks. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Earthly Anecdote by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Every time the bucks went clattering over Oklahoma, a firecat bristled in the way. Wherever they went, they went clattering until they swerved in a swift, circular line to the right, because of the fire-cat, or until they swerved in a swift, circular line to the left, because of the fire-cat. The bucks clattered, the fire-cat went leaping, to the right, to the left, and bristled in the way. Later, the fire-cat closed his bright eyes and slept, End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Emperor of Ice Cream by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake. Call the roller of big cigars, the muscular one. 
and bid him whip in kitchen cups concupiscent curds. Let the wenches dawdle in such dress as they are used to wear, and let the boys bring flowers in last month's newspapers. Let B be the finale of seam. The only emperor is the emperor of ice cream. Take from the dresser of deal, lacking the three glass knobs, that sheet on which she embroidered fantails once, and spread it so as to cover her face. If her horny feet protrude, they come to show how cold she is, and dumb. Let the lamp affix its beam. The only emperor is the emperor of ice cream. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Explanation by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Ach, mutter! This old black dress! I have been embroidering French flowers on it. Not by way of romance. Here is nothing of the ideal. Nine! Nine! It would have been different, Liebchen, if I had imagined myself in an orange gown, drifting through space like a figure on the church wall. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Exposition of the Contents of a Cab by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Victoria Clementina, negress, took seven white dogs to ride in a cab. Bells of the dogs chinked. Harness of the horse shuffled like brazen shells. Oh, he, he, fragrant puppets by the green lake pallors. She, too, is flesh and a breech-cloth might wear, netted of topaz and ruby, and savage blooms, thridding the squawkiest jungle in a golden sedan, white dogs at bay. What breech-cloth might you wear, except linen embroidered by elderly women? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Florist Wears Knee Breeches by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. My flowers are reflected in your mind, as you are reflected in your glass. When you look at them, there is nothing in your mind except the reflections of my flowers. But when I look at them, I see only the reflections in your mind, and not my flowers. It is my desire to bring roses, and place them before you in a white dish. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Frogs eat butterflies, snakes eat frogs, hogs eat snakes, men eat hogs. By Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. It is true that the rivers went nosing like swine, tugging at banks until they seemed bland belly sounds and somnolent troughs that the air was heavy with the breath of these swine, the breath of turgid summer, and heavy with thunder's ratapalax, that the man who erected this cabin, planted this field, and tended it a while, knew nothing of the quirks of imagery, that the hours of his indolent, arid days, grotesque with this nosing in banks, 
this somnolence and radipalax, seemed to suckle themselves on his arid being, as the swine-like rivers suckled themselves, while they went seaward to the sea-mouths. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. From a Junk by Wallace Stevens, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. A great fish plunges in the dark, its fins of rutted silver, sides belabored with a foamy light, and back brilliant with scaly salt. It glistens in the flapping wind, burns there and glistens wide and wide. Under the five-horned stars of night, in wind and wave, it is the moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. From the Misery of Don Juiced by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. I have finished my combat with the sun, and my body, the old animal, knows nothing more. The powerful seasons bred and killed, and were themselves the genie of their own ends. Oh, but the very self of the storm of sun and slaves, breeding and death, the old animal, the senses and feeling the very sound and sight, and all there was of the storm, knows nothing more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Gray Room by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Although you sit in a room that is gray, except for the silver of the straw paper, and pick at your pale white gown, or lift one of the green beads of your necklace to let it fall, or gaze at your green fan printed with the red branches of a red willow, or with one finger move the leaf in the bowl, the leaf that has fallen from the branches of the forsythia beside you. What is all this? I know how furiously your heart is beating. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Gubinal by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. That strange flower, the sun, is just what you say. Have it your way. The world is ugly and the people are sad. That tuft of jungle feathers, that animal eye, is just what you say. That savage of fire, that seed, have it your way. The world is ugly, and the people are sad. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hibiscus on the Sleeping Shores by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake I say now, Fernando, that on that day the mind roamed as a moth roams among the blooms beyond the open sand, and that whatever noise the motion of the waves made on the seaweeds and the covered stones disturbed not even the most idle ear. 
then it was that that monstered moth which had lain folded against the blue and the colored purple of the lazy sea and which had drowsed along the bony shores shut to the blather that the water made rose up besprent and sought the flaming red dabbled with yellow pollen red as red as the flag above the old cafe and roamed there all the stupid afternoon end of poem this recording is in the public domain Home Again by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Back within the valley, down from the divide, No more flaming clouds about, oh, the soft hillside, And my cottage light, and the starry night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Him from a Watermelon Pavilion by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake You dweller in the dark cabin, To whom the watermelon is always purple, Whose garden is wind and moon, Of the two dreams, night and day, What lover, what dreamer, Would choose the one obscured by sleep? Here is the plantain by your door, And the best cock of red feather That crew before the clocks. A femme may come, leaf green, Whose coming may give revel Beyond revelries of sleep. Yes, and the blackbird spread its tail So that the sun may speckle, While it creaks hail. You dweller in the dark cabin, rise, since rising will not waken, and hail, cry hail, cry hail. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Battle by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Death's nobility again beautified the simplest men. Fallen Winkle felt the pride of Agamemnon when he died. What could London's work and waste give him to that salty sacrificial taste? What could London's sorrow bring To that short triumphant sting? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Indigo Glass in the Grass by Wallace Stevens, read for LibriVox.org, by Alan Davis Drake. Which is real? This bottle of indigo glass in the grass. Or the bench with the pot of geraniums, the stained mattress, and the washed overalls drying in the sun? Which of these truly contains the world? Neither one nor the two together. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Infanta Marina by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake her terrace was the sand and the palms and the twilight. She made the motions of her wrist, the grandiose gestures of her thought. 
The rumpling of the plumes of this creature of the evening came to be slights of sails over the sea, and thus she roamed in the roamings of her fan, partaking of the sea and of the evening, as they flowed around and uttered their subsiding sound. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Invective Against Swans by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The soul, O ganders, flies beyond the parks, and far beyond the discords of the wind. A bronze rain from the sun descending marks the death of summer, which that time endures like one who scrawls a listless testament of golden quirks and paphian caricatures, bequeathing your white feathers to the moon and giving your bland motions to the air. Behold, already on the long parades the crows anoint the statues with their dirt, and the soul, O ganders, being lonely, flies beyond your chilly chariots, to the skies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Life is Motion by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake. In Oklahoma, Bonnie and Josie, dressed in calico, danced around a stump. They cried, Oh, ho, ya, ho, oh, who, celebrating the marriage of flesh and air. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Load of Sugar Cane by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The going of the glade boat is like water flowing, like water flowing through the green sawgrass under the rainbows, under the rainbows that are like birds, turning, bedizened, while the wind still whistles as killdeer do when they rise at the red turban of the boatman. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lulu Gay by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Lulu sang of barbarians before the eunuchs of gobs, who called her Orchidian, sniffed her and slapped heavy hands upon her. She made the eunuchs ululate. She described for them the manners of the barbarians, what they did with their thumbs. The eunuchs heard her with continual ululation. She described how the barbarians kissed her with their wide mouths and breaths as true as the gum of the gum tree. Olu, the eunuchs cried, Ululalu. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Meditation by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. How long have I meditated, O Prince, on sky and earth? It comes to this, that even the moon has exhausted its emotions. What is it that I think of, truly? The lines of blackberry bushes, the design of leaves, Neither sky nor earth expressed themselves before me. Bousset did not preach at the funerals of puppets. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O oh, Florida, Venereal Soil by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake A few things for themselves, Convolvulus and coral, Buzzards and live moss, Tiestas from the keys, A few things for themselves, Florida, Venereal Soil, Disclose to the lover, the dreadful sundry of this world, the Cuban, Polodowski, the Mexican woman, the Negro undertaker killing the time between corpses, fishing for crayfish, virgin of boorish births. Swiftly in the nights, in the porches of Key West, behind the Bogan Villas, after the guitar is asleep, lasciviously as the wind, you come tormenting insatiable when you might sit a scholar of darkness sequestered over the sea wearing a clear tiara of red and blue and red sparkling solitary still in the high sea shadow donna donna dark stooping in indigo gown and cloudy constellations conceal yourself or Disclose fewest things to the lover. A hand that bears a thick-leaved fruit, A pungent bloom against your shade. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Outside the Hospital by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake See the blind and the lame at play There on the summer lawn She with her graceless eyes of clay Quick as a frightened fawn Running and tripping into his way Whose legs are gone How shall she scape him? Where shall she fly? She who never sees. Now he is near her, now she is by. Into his arms she flees. Hear her gay laughter, hear her light cry among the trees. Princess, my captive, master, my king, here is a garland bright. Red roses, I wonder, red with the spring, red with a reddish light? Red roses, my princess, I ran to bring, and be your knight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Paltry Nude Starts on a Spring Voyage by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The Paltry Nude starts on a spring voyage, but not on a shell. She starts, archaic for the sea. But on the first found weed she scuds the glitters, noiselessly like one more wave. She too is discontent, and would have purple stuff upon her arms, Tired of the salty harbors, eager for the brine and bellowing of the high interiors of the sea. The wind speeds her, blowing upon her hands and watery back. She touches the clouds, where she goes in the circle of her traverse of the sea. Yet this is meager play in the scurry and water shine, as her heels foam, not as when the goldener nude of a latter day will go, like the center of sea-green pomp, in an intenser calm, scullion of fate, across the spick torrent, ceaselessly, upon her irretrievable way. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Peter Quince at the Clavier Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake 1. Just as my fingers on these keys make music, so the self-same sounds of my spirit make a music too. Music is feeling, then, not sound, and thus it is that what I feel here in this room desiring you thinking of your blue shadowed silk is music it is like the strain waked in the elders by susanna of a green evening clear and warm she bathed in her still garden while the red-eyed elders watching felt the bases of their being throb in witching chords and their thin blood pulse pizzicati of hosanna Two. In the green water, clear and warm, Susanna lay. She searched the touch of springs and found concealed imaginings. She sighed for so much melody. Upon the bank she stood in the cool of spent emotions. She felt among the leaves the dew of old devotions. She walked upon the grass, still quavering. The winds were like her maids, on timid feet, fetching her woven scarves, yet wavering. A breath upon her hand muted the night. She turned, a cymbal crashed, and roaring horns. 3. Soon, with a noise like tambourines, came her attendant Byzantines. They wondered why Susanna cried against the elders by her side. And as they whispered, the refrain was like a willow swept by rain. Anon their lamps' uplifted flame revealed Susanna and her shame. And then the simpering Byzantines fled with a noise like tambourines. 4. Beauty is momentary in the mind, a fitful tracing of a portal. But in the flesh it is immortal. The body dies, the body's beauty lives, so the evenings die in their green going, a wave interminably flowing. So gardens die, their meek breath scenting the cowl of winter, done repenting. So maidens die, to the auroral celebration of a maiden's chorale. Susanna's music touched the bawdy strings of those white elders, but escaping left only death's ironic scraping. Now, in its immortality, it plays on the clear viol of her memory and makes a constant sacrament of praise. End of poem. This poem is in the public domain. Phases by Wallace Stevens, read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. 1. There's a little square in Paris waiting until we pass. They sit idly there, they sip the glass. There's a cab horse in the corner, there's rain. The season grieves, it was silver once, and green with leaves. There's a parrot in a window. Will see us on parade. Hear the loud drums roll and serenade. 2. This was the salty taste of glory that is not like Agamemnon's story. Only an eyeball in the mud. And Hopkins, flat and pale and gory. 3. But the bugles in the night were wings that bore to where our comfort was, arabesques of candle beams winding through our heavy dreams, winds that blew where the bending iris grew, 
Birds of intermittent bliss, Singing in the night's abyss, Vines with yellow fruit that fell along the walls that bordered hell. 4. Death's nobility again beautified the simplest men. Fallen Winkle felt the pride of Agamemnon when he died. What could London's work and waste give him to the salty sacrificial taste? What could London's sorrow bring? To that short triumphant sting. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Place of the Solitaires by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Let the place of the solitaires be a place of perpetual undulation. Whether it be in mid-sea, on the dark green water-wheel, or on the beaches, there must be no cessation of motion or of the noise of motion, the renewal of noise and manifold continuation. And most of the motion of thought and its restless iteration in the place of the solitaires which is to be a place of perpetual undulation end of poem this recording is in the public domain Plowing on Sunday by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. The white cock's tail tosses in the wind. The turkey cock's tail glitters in the sun. Water in the fields. The wind pours down. The feathers flare and bluster in the wind. Remus, blow your horn. I'm plowing on Sunday, plowing North America, blow your horn. Tum ti tum, ti tum tum tum. The turkey cock's tail spreads to the sun. The white cock's tail streams to the moon, water in the fields. The wind pours down. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Snowman by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake of Long Branch, New Jersey. One must have a mind of winter to regard the frost and the boughs of the pine trees crusted with snow, and have been cold a long time to behold the junipers shagged with ice, the spruces rough in the distant glitter of the January sun and not to think of any misery in the sound of the wind, in the sound of a few leaves, which is the sound of the land full of the same wind that is blowing the same bare place for the listener who listens in the snow, and nothing himself beholds nothing that is not there and the nothing that is. End of Poem this recording is in the public domain. Song by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. There are great things doing in the world, little rabbit. There is a damsel sweeter than the sound of the willow, dearer than shallow water flowing over pebbles, of a Sunday. She wears a long coat with twelve buttons on it. Tell that to your mother. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tattoo by Wallace Stevens. 
Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. The light is like a spider. It crawls over the water. It crawls over the edges of the snow. It crawls under your eyelids and spreads its web there. It's two webs. The webs of your eyes are fastened to the flesh and bones of you, as to rafters or grass. There are filaments of your eyes on the surface of the water and in the edges of the snow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tea by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. When the elephant's ear in the park shriveled in frost, and the leaves on the paths ran like rats, your lamplight fell on shining pillows of sea shades and sky shades, like umbrellas in Java. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Theory by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. I am what is around me. Women understand this. One is not duchess a hundred yards from a carriage. These, then, are portraits. A black vestibule. A high bed sheltered by curtains. These are merely instances. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thirteen Ways of Looking at a Blackbird by Wallace Stevens Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake of Long Branch, New Jersey. 1. Among twenty snowy mountains, the only moving thing was the eye of the blackbird. 2. I was of three minds, like a tree in which there were three blackbirds. 3. The blackbird whirled in the autumn wind. It was a small part of the pantomime. 4. A man and a woman are one. A man and a woman and a blackbird are one. 5. I do not know which to prefer, the beauty of inflections, or the beauty of innuendos, the blackbird whistling, or just after. 6. Icicles fill the window with barbaric glass. The shadow of the blackbird crossed it to and fro. The mood traced in the shadow an indecipherable cause. 7. O thin men of Hadam, why do you imagine golden birds? Do you not see how the blackbird walks around the feet of the women about you? 8. I know noble accents and lucid inescapable rhythms, but I know, too, that the blackbird is involved in what I know. 9. When the blackbird flew out of sight, it marked the edge of one of many circles. 10. At the sight of blackbirds flying in a green light, even the bawds of euphony would cry out sharply. 11. He rode over Connecticut in a glass coach. Once, a fear pierced him. 
in that he mistook the shadow of his equipage for blackbirds. 12. The river is moving. The blackbird must be flying. 13. It was evening all afternoon. It was snowing, and it was going to snow. The blackbird sat in the cedar limbs. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Roaring Wind by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. What syllable are you seeking, Vocalissimus? In the distance of sleep? Speak it. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Valley Candle by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. My candle burned alone in an immense valley. Beams of the huge night converged upon it, until the wind blew. Then beams of the huge night converged upon its image, until the wind blew. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wind Shifts by Wallace Stevens. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. This is how the wind shifts, like the thoughts of an old human who still thinks eagerly and despairingly. The wind shifts like this, like a human without illusions, who still feels irrational things within her. The wind shifts like this. Like humans approaching proudly, like humans approaching angrily. This is how the wind shifts, like a human heavy and heavy who does not care. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.